Hi everyone. This is Big Northern Bear. My channel is about people trying to overcome atrial fibrillation, but lately I've been introduced to a new health challenge. So uh, perhaps that's why this video was suggested to you. I've just had surgery for brain cancer in the past few weeks. It was all very sudden and urgent. And I'd like to talk about that today because that could be why you came across this video. So I have an extremely rare form of what is considered typically pediatric brain cancer. I'm 54 years, age, uh, years of age. And the cancer I have been diagnosed with is pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma. I've actually got the grade 3 version, which is anaplastic pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma. So it's quite a mouthful to say this thing. And so just some slides here from me going for my surgery. This was uh, some stuff they put on my forehead so they could do the pre-surgery MRI and line everything up for when I was on the operating table. This is my brother wheeling me to the MRI. And he stayed with me for a day in the hospital after my diagnosis. And this is the post-surgery bandage and my post-surgery walk for the first time with physio to make sure I could get up and actually walk. And a little bit about me and my name's Danny. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be putting up updates as I go and information as I find it, both for AFib and now for um, PXA tumors. Now just to show you, I've been recovering well from surgery every morning at about 5 a.m. I go for a mile and a half walk. I try to do three miles of walking each day since the surgery. I find that's one of the most helpful things to do after the craniotomy. So let's talk about pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma grade 3, which is what I have. It's typically found in uh, late teens to early, early 20s. So in my case, I was 54. But it's typically considered one of the childhood brain tumors. Usually benign, but not in my case, since I have the grade 3 one, which is more aggressive and requires more concern. Pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma and anaplastic pleomorphic, which is mine, is extremely rare. In the United States, 83 people a year are diagnosed. 62 of them are adults, and in the adults group is anyone over age 15 and older. So I bet if they, they said 21 and under, um, it would be about a 50-50 split between adults and and children. So right now there are only about a thousand people alive with this tumor, this type of tumor. That's how rare it is. The five-year survival rate is 76.2 percent for type 2. Because I have type, T, type 3, the survival rate is about 15 percent less from what I can tell. And just, com just comparing this uh, CNS type tumor to other CNS types tumor in terms of their survivability. So you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a dark green line near the top of the survivability graph, and that's where we're at with this tumor. So out of all these tumors, this if you're gonna if you're gonna reach into a basket and pick a cancer tumor in your brain, this is probably one of the ones you're hoping for. Um, Compared to other CNS cancers, survival rate is considerably favorable. You see it's up near the top. Okay. Um, it's to the rarity, scientists found the overall combined incidence for all 12 types of CNS tumors combined is 1.5 people per 100,000 people. So this CNS tumor is alone pretty rare. Only 0.3% of those are pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma. So we're talking a rare form of a rare disease right now. Okay, PXA mostly occurs in children under 15. That's where it's most frequently found. The oldest person ever diagnosed with PXA is 69. Most are under 25. I am 54 years old when I was diagnosed. 
As this cancer is so rare and much of its population is under the age of consent, there's very little research. There's no standard guidelines for its treatment. Um, seems to be hit or miss whether or not to use uh, radiation or chemotherapy. So far, it seems like, from my research, seems like chemotherapy is the preferred approach. They use the same drugs they use for glioblastoma because it's, it's uh, related. And one thing, PXA can on rare occasions progress into glioblastoma. So it sort of makes sense that some of the same therapies would be used. That's it for my slide. So that's just a quick presentation on this, uh, this rare tumor I've been diagnosed with. Just want to share it with my existing audience and anyone who might be uh, in Google typing pleomorphic xanthroastrocytoma because I got very few results back. So I, I abhor a void. So I'd like to just throw something in there. Now, if you've been diagnosed with this cancer, I would love to hear from you. You can email me at bignorthernbear at gmail.com. I would love a cancer buddy to go through this with. Um, as for my treatment right now, I'm waiting to meet an oncologist. I'm, I'm, I'm trapped in the Canadian healthcare system. I'm waiting my turn. So I know all this from the lab reports I got from my hospital login. So I'm meeting with an oncologist. And in the meantime, I've just been doing a four to one strict medical keto diet in hopes that it has some uh, benefit towards fighting cancers. It seems that brain cancers uniquely might benefit from a keto diet. So I've been doing that religiously since I got home. It's normalized all my blood sugar, even though I'm on the steroids. And uh, it's normalized my blood pressure, and I, I do feel it's benefiting me, and I definitely have ketones every day, so know the diet's worth doing what it's supposed to be doing. So again, if you have this type of cancer and you'd like to reach out to me, bignorthernbear at gmail.com, would love to hear from you, because um, it's such a rare thing. I mean, in Canada, there's, I would guess, 10 cases a year, just based off the population difference from the U.S., so if you want to continue following both my uh, health battles against AFib and now brain cancer, don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube at BigNorthernBear.com. Thank you.